Hello and a warm welcome to Politics Today. Uh, we have a special treat in store for you all today. We have an exclusive interview with Alan Jewell Williams, who is the founder and the CEO of Christian Concern. And uh, thanks to you uh, and the great work that you and Christian Concern have done, you have really protected Christian freedoms that have been under attack in this nation for the last two decades or so. So uh, on behalf of all our viewers as well, we just want to congratulate you. We want to thank you and your team for the tireless, endless work you do to ensure that we are able to read the Bible, that we're able to go to church, that we are able to discuss our faith in the workplace. And I dread to think what kind of nation that we'd be living in if it wasn't for you and, and Christian Concern. So, Simon, it's so nice of you to say that and so nice of you to encourage me in that way. It means such a lot, you know, in this kind of battle that we're in day in, day out, these encouragements mean a lot. And knowing, I mean, coming to the studio today and seeing Howard and the team um, as I walked in absolutely thrilled my heart. I mean, I, rem I know this revelation journey. It's been a sort of life of two ministries in parallel. And I really, truly believe that um, the Lord in both of these ministries went before us. He He's at the centre of these ministries and he has sustained them. And we can see his guiding hand and the miracle that it is. You know, I think that um, it's not exaggerated to say that um, what we see in these ministries and the way in which they are sustained and way, the way in which we are protected, um, are, it's just daily miracles. That's what we see and witness. And, what a privilege, isn't it, Simon, to Absolutely. just, you know, to be in the midst of it, really. Absolutely, and to be on the front line as well, and yes. to actually protect Christians. Well, obviously, we do a different role here at Revelation. Yeah. We, we, we highlight key issues that are affecting the nation and to get a Christian perspective on that. And this is what this programme's about. It's essentially giving Christians a political voice when we are looking at our nation, we're looking at our parliament, we are looking... Uh, such a departure from our Judeo-Christian heritage and any kind of um, understanding of, of the political heritage, the spiritual heritage that we had, um, which was extremely rich uh, over the decades and over the centuries, just feels like it's vanished. And uh, of course, now we, f as born again believers, we find that we're in a minority uh, in our nation because the, our nation has gone so far uh, down this liberal path of morality, that, that there is no reflection as of where we are now to probably that uh, World War II generation that prayed, that interceded when we were under threat from the Nazis, and it was the Lord that delivered us again. But it takes a remnant, doesn't it, Danja, to, to change that, a nation? That is it. And I think that we need to consider, in the, the picture that you just presented there, you, you reflected back to the um, generation of the Second World War, they came out of that into the 50s and the 60s. And it was really in the six, 1960s that we um, began to see some fundamental throwing off um, of the Christian structure that had prevailed in the nation, the Christian structure around uh, family and around freedoms. Um, So-called sexual, liberal, um, se sexual liberation with the advent of the pill, um, and free love, this kind of thing, um, meant there was a generation, it was my parents' generation, I was born in 1965, that threw off what they felt to be a kind of a, a, an oppressive morality. Um, so it was then my, they forgot God, then my generation were the children of that generation and they weren't brought up to fear God. I think in that slip as, you, um, as we opened up um, in the... Um, opening clip you see on the buses, Revelation TV, put, you know, the fear of God um, is, well, it's the beginning of understanding, it's the beginning of wisdom. Um, but I think that to think that this, this set of parents, my, my generation of parents were often not raised in faith, but they forgot God, then our children, uh, so my children are now uh, through school getting married, but that's now two generations that have forgotten God. And the children in our schools, it's no wonder. You know, it's the children's children's children that we're in a place whereby even as young as four, two, three, four, even in the nursery school, the concept that there is one true God, the concept that they are made in the image of God, the concept of sexual purity, 
um, the concept of loving God, praying to God. These things, the, what Christmas, what does it really mean? Or Easter, what does it really mean? Um, these, these are things that are just simply not understood. They're not understood because generation after generation has forgotten God. So it's serious. Where we're at is serious. And the strangest thing is, is that people still somehow think that there's, that they understand what Christianity is, when in fact most people have no real idea. And that presents us with an opportunity, but we do have to understand just how far and how deep is the loss of the Christian story in Abs our nation at this time. No, absolutely, and it's very sad. I think we can really point to um, the, uh, Harold Wilson and his administration, particularly in 67, which was such a strategic uh, year. Not only did Israel face its, uh, the Six Day War liberated uh, Jerusalem, uh, tripled its size and territory, but also we saw in 67 was the fact that um, you know, the, the government of, of the day um, decriminalized abortion. Um, they also then decided to, uh, and I think this is the most shameful act of all, was to decriminalize the Witchcraft Act. Yes. And I think that just opened up an occultic explosion across our nation. And I think that one piece of legislation is essentially to blame for the entire mess that we're in now. Yeah, well, that year was quite something. And of course, what we also saw from 1967 to 1969 was the um, Divorce Reform Act, which also made divorce easier. And I think that when you begin to have um, when you begin to no longer honour marriage as between a man and a woman uh, and put that at the centre of society, when you open up the possibility of abortion, when you no longer have, which me, when you, which the abortion is obviously protecting life from the moment of conception. And that, that is really vital. That was always understood um, as a given. And in law to protect life from the moment of conception to the point of natural death. We've got a move in Parliament right now to legalise assisted suicide again. There have been 13 uh, attempts in UK governments over the past 11 years or so. And then another one is coming in. And I wonder whether we have the moral fibre in this nation to resist that again. But um, we just have to look at the catastrophe that is the Abortion Act in many ways. Nine and a half million missing um, citizens. That number is huge. It's more than the combined city populations pretty much from Glasgow uh, down to Bristol. Um, all of those cities just entirely wiped out. Glasgow, Leeds, Manchester, Cardiff, Birmingham, wiped out. Um, and yet there's a, there's, a, there's a silence about it, a national silence, and we call it a good. I mean, anybody, no matter where they come, what they think um, around abortion, anybody must surely say, you know, nine and a half million is too many, 800 every day is too many, um, and yet there is this an all-pervading silence, but not just in the nation at large, um, but also uh, in the churches. But don't you think that when historians look back at this period of time, and uh, I have a very, very strong sense that we're in the last of the last days, so uh, the, the book of Revelation is really becoming very, very real, particularly after uh, the global pandemic, COVID-19. But if historians have the opportunity to look back at this period of history in the West, one actually say that it was the issue of abortions that killed Western civilization, because essentially what we're seeing is that our nations in the West, including the states and across Europe, is being taken over. We've had to have mass immigration come in to, to fill in all the jobs because our own population is, is not having uh, uh, enough children to, to actually meet the economic needs of the nation. So therefore, we've had to bring in alien cultures, we've had to get rid of our Judeo-Christian heritage, we've had to adopt multiculturalism, uh, and some of these cultures are determined to impose their religious ideology on our nation. Um, and, and so therefore, 
isn't it essential that we don't look at not only the life of one baby, but also the life of our entire Western civilization is now seriously under threat from the disastrous policies that were pursued in this late 60s and early 70s? Yes, I just, I think that, again, the, the truth is that people don't know what they don't know. And if our children and our children's children and our children's children's children are taught that um, the baby in the womb is just a clump of cells, that abortion is the solution to a problem. Um, and if we have young, young men and women in a crisis pregnancy and they've been told, they have been indoctrinated to believe, they, they don't think this is life, they just think that the answer is abortion, that this is accessible, it's available, then there's such blindness and also not, that this isn't caring and compassionate for the people in that situation. Because of course, what happens to so many is that they find that it wasn't really just a clump of cells. And how they're left feeling and um, their confusion and their grief, the, these things that occur um, are, and not, it's not something society is talking about. Let's just look at what's happened during this pandemic period under the coronavirus um, legislation, which was passed in March um, of 2020. That same week, um, the government, the Department of Health, passed regulations. Matt Hancock signed them off, despite saying that he wouldn't change the law on abortion to allow for pills by post um, telemedical, telemedicine. So you call up on the phone, say that you are in an unplanned pregnancy and pills essentially get sent to you. That was opened up at the very beginning of the uh, coronavirus pandemic. Also during this period, we had further liberalisation around, um, uh, around marriage laws. Um, divorce made even easier. This was uh, last, last in the summer of 2020. So, this legislation, supposedly to protect us and to save lives, became legislation that made the taking of lives um, easier. And in fact, the abortion statistics of pills by posts mirror exactly the deaths by COVID. You could just imagine that again, you know, 81.3 80, uh, is the average age of death um, pursuant to coronavirus. Imagine all the lives, you know, the over 100,000 lives that don't get to have their first breath because they were destroyed by a pill through the post. And then, um, you may have picked up, Simon, even in this last week, um, we um, at Christian Concern have been looking after a doctor um, who was uh, accused by Mary Stopes, the abortion provider, of supplying pills that reverse the first pill. So we have a doctor who's a car consultant cardiologist, he's, he's a hero, his name is Dermot Kearney. And during this period, women who Google um, to say, I regret taking the first pill or I regret my abortion pill, they Google, they go to an address in America, Heartbeat International, who send them back, who've sent them back to Dr. Dermot. He gives them progesterone, a very safe hormone, which is used to stop miscarriages. And he's, he has seen tens of, tens of women come to him. We're seeing tens of babies born as a result of this pill, but he's been suspended from doing that by the GMC. So the pills that save lives, that service is suspended, but the pills that take lives, that service continues. And in this period, of course, the other thing was that, just to show how crazy it is that Matt Hancock made an exception for travel to commit suicide in Switzerland. So you can travel to Zurich as an exception to take your life. Now, that is a world that is on its head. That, that is a world that is handed over. That is a world that is confused. And as Christians, Revelation, Church Without Walls, uh, that we should, our hearts should cry out. We need to, as it, as it says in Chronicles, that we need to repent of our wicked ways for what we have not spoken of, the church, that is. And we need to understand that, the, that this, these people are so lost, 
They cannot even see the moral anomaly because the darkness is so great. And when it becomes this great, we need the Lord's return or we need this extraordinary outpouring of repentance from the church, which asks the Lord to spare us and to see revival in our land. Because I have to say this as well, trying to explain to people the gospel, trying to get through to people um, with the gospel is very hard in this, in this time. It's very, lo it's very hard work, it's very long work. There is power in the gospel message but it's as if we need to see the wind of God, the, the, the power of the Holy Spirit sweep through in, in ways that can only be him, you know, that because just the speaking of it seems so very difficult. Trying to get people to understand it, even the con is, is very difficult indeed, I, I think. Um, I know that there's power in the gospel. And I've seen so many, and you do see change, and you still see the change in, in people when they, when they know the Lord Jesus Christ, but we need that sweeping across the nation. We need a sort of corporate, a corporate turning, turning around. And I believe the Lord does things like that with nations. Absolutely, but the big question is, <coughs> have our nations gone too far? Uh, you know, if we have a look at uh, what happened in, in the States recently, we had President Trump and his administration, probably the most pro-Christian uh, administration in the White House for, for decades, um, pushing back on abortion, pushing back on this social liberal agenda, uh, and just really putting the brakes on. And then, of course, we saw that, uh, you know, he didn't win the, uh, the pres his re-election. Um, back in November 2020, and then we've seen the mass acceleration of this antichrist spirit, antichrist agenda, which is essentially anti-Christian, uh, and it almost feels as if the, the the West now has gone too far, as it were, for for any kind of redemption. I've always believed, up until kind of COVID-19, that that God could intervene, that God could change a nation. I still do, but I think maybe for the sake of the mercy of the unborn, for the sake of the morality that we are seeing, the ungodliness that we are seeing across the West, um, that maybe God said, no, uh, I am not going to allow uh, a change in our nation. It's just about changing individuals uh, and bringing people into the kingdom. Society's gone now too far. Uh, and so therefore, we, all we can expect really is judgment. I mean, you talked about um, a kind of abortion earlier. What a kind of crazy world that we're living in when someone can describe a baby as a fetus if they don't want it. Uh, but if they want the baby, then it becomes a baby. And even in the kind of t definition, we, have no, we are living in a society that's not based on kind of rational thought or based on facts. It's all about emotions and perception. If you perceive this, then yeah. this is what it is. And so truth and reality are thrown out the window. There is no moral clarity. There's no moral clarity from, from our world leaders. And, uh, you know, our nations are, are rapidly spinning out of control and are heading down a very, very dangerous path because it's only a question of time before. Um, and if we look at ancient Israel's case, when, when ancient Israel was kicked out of the land, the Babylonians invaded, the Assyrians invaded, we're living in a very, very similar time uh, where the vast majority of our political leaders, our, our media, our, our business corporations, they don't want the biblical truth. And so therefore, ultimately, there'll be a huge price to pay for it. Well, I think we are living um, with the consequences of, of that rebellion. We're living with um, children that are confused, confused about um, who they are, confused, um, confused even about their gender, little boys and girls told that they can change their gender. Um, we confused about their sexuality. There's, there's uh, depressed, um, are the, ch the amount of children that are um, depressed and self-harming. Uh, we are, it's sad. Society is really quite sad. Um, and in the gospel is joy Amen. and hope. And this, and this is, so my, I do have this vision Still, I mean, I understand what you mean, Simon, in that have we really just gone 
too far. And sometimes I do feel like this sort of grumpy prophet that wants to say, <laughs> we don't deserve rescue. We really don't deserve rescue. But God is so extraordinarily patient, more patient than me. And over and over again, all Israel had to do was turn Absolutely. from her wicked ways and um, he, would, he restored her. And still, still the Lord cries out, turn from your wicked ways and you will be restored. We know he shows us the how now to live. He shows us that when we um, look after the most fragile, so the unborn, when we marry one man or one woman in lifelong union, when we raise children within that construct, when we build our families and care for our communities, when we love Jesus Christ, when we keep our children safe in that environment, then our families and our communities flourish. That's the picture of the whole of history. It's not difficult. It's simple. Restoration is simple. It is to turn back to the Lord Jesus, to the Lord Jesus Christ. And I still, and I pray, you know, I, I I have spent all my life getting up in the morning, loving the Lord Jesus Christ and contending, whether in the law courts, in Parliament, on the media, for him. Um, and it does feel um, as if, so, as you said, so much has been lost. Um, Yet, and yet, um, am, I, I mean, am I losing heart in terms of what might be won in Parliament? Yes. Do I think we can win in Parliament? Well, I'm not going to sit on Revelation TV and say to the viewers here, to you, Simon, no, we can't. Um, because we believe in a God of miracles. Absolutely, and you've got to fight to the and you, lot. And you've got to fight to the lot. We've got to stand and we've got to stand and stand and contend. But what will be the difference? The difference is what I've said before. It's to turn back to Jesus Christ. It is to marry and to have children and love your communities and to serve him, to know him and to serve him. It's a simple formula. And I think the churches, we, in terms of the, the revival, if they're, you know, if the Lord were to spare us, I say open up. The, I say the churches should be open twenty four seven. We shouldn't be allow ourselves to be closed. We should be there to be the healing houses, the education houses. That's how we've got to view mission. We're going to be the places where where the lost and the lonely and the fragmented say that door is open, and we're going in there to find community. I'm in an unplanned pregnancy. I'm going in there to allow them to help me to look after my baby or for this baby to be saved, whatever that looks like. I'm going in there because I'm elderly and frail and there I won't be alone and they will protect me. And, the, and I, so I see that, I, I, I see, we've got to reclaim the schools, we've got to reclaim the hospitals. They don't belong to the state. It doesn't all belong to the state. We don't cede our morality or our health. Um, or how we live to the state, but we allow that we've become so indoctrinated um, by the state. The state will tell you how to live. The state will tell you um, how to be, how to do your health. The state will tell you how to have family. The state will tell you about your children. The state, the state takes over. The state will educate your children. No, I educate my children. The, I look after my children. I look after my children. The church looks after her children, not the state. And if the state is teaching stuff that I don't want them to teach as a parent or, or our children in church, then we have to say, no, let's fling open the schools. Let's start schools. Let's start our hospitals. Let's do it. I don't know how long we've got, but we're coming rapidly to the yeah. end of the programme. I certainly could do an, another half an hour with, with you, Andrew, that, that's for sure. But in terms of our viewers watching, uh, you are an inspiration and you are hope in what you are doing. And I, I, like I said at the beginning, I dread to think what state our nation would be in, um, particularly for our Christian freedoms, if it wasn't for you and Christian concern. So in terms of our viewers, how can they support you uh, in prayer? How can they support Christian concern practically? Um, because you are representing hundreds of thousands of Christians in this nation. Well, thank you, Simon. And a little bit like your viewers are so faithful to uh, this channel, which is exciting. And I, re and I love Revelation for that. Um, can I say, um, it's just being part of that family. It's being part of that movement. 
So if you don't receive information from us at Christian Concern, then sign up to receive our weekly emails and also our breaking news. And you can do that at www.christianconcern.com forward slash hello. Um, come, and jo come and join the movement. Really be part of it. And there, there we, we do, we, I still call it the Christian Concern family. I call it this amazing movement of Christians that are prayerful, that love their community, that give sacrificially, uh, and are used, therefore, partner with us, are used, therefore, to contend in cases where Christians lose their jobs simply as a result of living and speaking out for Jesus Christ in the, in the workplace, um, that contend in Parliament, um, that contend uh, in the media. We are there. Uh, contend in education. We've got a new education officer, um, head of education, rather. Um, that would be great to have him on your programme to talk Abs about absolutely. Schools, yeah, yeah, more, more. And also, we haven't even got time to talk about your Wilberforce Academy and preparing the next generation for the fight, because that's really where the, uh, the battle is now, isn't it? Yes. I mean, and we need, we need to see. I think that this next generation is pretty fiery. And, I, and uh, probably because when they're living in the chaos, they're living in our chaos, they're living with the fruits of our rebellion. Uh, and I know I'm a generation above you, Simon, but you know, but, but you know, but, yeah. but so, so, so um, but I mean, they really are um, living with that. So when they get saved, they're radically saved and they're saved out of mess. They're saved, they, and so suddenly, now Jesus really changed me. Jesus made things clear for me. I suddenly understood what it means to, uh, to live in a, ho you know, ho in a holy way. A holy people is a happy people. I mean, imagine that. I know, what it, I, I, I know that this stuff that the world tells me is great didn't prove to be great. Let's raise a holy generation. Uh, and your absolute pleasure to have you on Politics today. And thank you so much for the work you're doing, your dedication, and, and thank you for still contending in the fight. Because like I said, I don't know what state our, our nation would be without you. So and your team. So thank you so much for the incredible and relentless work that you do. And I want to thank you for watching this program today. Please, can we keep Angela Williams and all of Christian Concern in our prayers and in our thoughts, get involved and sign up for their newsletter because they are literally on the front line in defending our Christian freedoms in the UK. So we need to support them. So I want to thank you for watching this edition of Politics Today.